Now let's take a look at what happens when we introduce phasing to sound and how we could apply it creatively using synthesis. First off, I've got two tracks here with identical clips of pink noise. When I play those together, it sounds like this. So pink noise is all frequencies at equal loudness. Therefore, we hear the lowest range, 20 hertz, 40 hertz, 80 hertz, etc., at the exact same loudness as we hear 1,000 hertz and 10,000 hertz, etc. So if I play these two together and they're perfectly in sync with each other, we just hear it get louder. As I mute that track on and off. But let me play these two together and shift one of them away from each other. So I'm going to shift using this sample delay here. I've got it in milliseconds in Logic. And listen to what happens as I introduce a few milliseconds in delay and beyond. Listen to the quality of sound change. Alright, so what we're hearing is called comb filtering. That's what happens when we end up with some waves at certain frequencies meeting constructively, meaning they're adding together, and other waves meeting destructively, where we've got a positive meeting up with a negative and there's some cancellation going on. In some cases, we may get a complete uh, doubling of the sound, like we heard when we had both of these tracks turned on, or we may get uh, an area where they both meet completely out of phase and therefore cancel out, more than likely we end up with something in between where there's some addition going on, there's sub subtraction going on, and it creates a wave-like shape across the spectrum. Looks kind of like the teeth of a, of a hair comb, so that's why it's called a comb filter. So the sound isn't altogether that exciting when we're listening to pink noise, but let's see how we might be able to employ it in a synthesizer. So here I've got the retro synth from uh, logic and I've got a, a couple of sawtooth waves called up here for kind of a, a, a old-fashioned sawtooth strings buzzy brass kind of sound. <laughs> Not bad, but not terribly exciting. Let's come over here and we notice, first of all, that I've got control over the semitone position of the second waveform. And I also have sense control. So a semitone, if I hold down a, an octave here, or I'm gonna hold down a single note and then bring it up to an octave. <laughs> Okay. But if I change sense, there are a hundred cents between uh, two semitones. So I, uh, with this control, I can go up by 50 cents, I can go down by 50 cents. And if I option click on this knob, it'll restore it back to zero cents. Listen to what happens now if I hold down an octave in my left hand and introduce a few cents of, of pitch difference, uh, shifting shape two, as it's called here, or oscillator two, relative to where the first oscillator is positioned. <laughs> Now as I sustain that, you hear kind of a pulsing, almost like a chorus or a flanger type effect that's coming into the sound. Again, that's because we've got all these different frequencies uh, at different intensities meeting in and out of phase and creating this richer quality to it. So here's that original figure that I played. Same thing, reset to zero cents. Much more interesting to my ear with the detuning going on, and that's something that you could apply anytime you have more than one oscillator happening at a time. Some software instruments and hardware instruments also give you the option of using a comb filter as an effect, so that's something that you can look at as well. <laughs> 